I'm going to give a demonstration on how to use a loop in an application. A lot of times when you're writing an application that is going to validate user input, you use a loop. In other words, if the user does not enter the right kind of input that the application is using for, you can just repeat the process of asking that user for that information. So loops are used to repeat code and you determine whether or not to repeat running one or more lines of code based on some condition. And that condition is going to evaluate to true or false. So it's kind of like if you were reading on the back of the shampoo bottle and you see, you know, lather, rinse, repeat, right? That repeat means you're going to lather, rinse, repeat. Now, the condition in that case is you're going to do it one or more times depending on whether your hair feels clean. So while your hair feels unclean, you're going to lather, rinse, repeat. You encounter loops and the idea of repeating something that you do in everyday life. So if you were, say, um, cooking brownies and you were supposed to stir the brownie mix a hundred stirs, then you would repeat that process of stirring so for each stir, you would keep stirring while you have not stirred a hundred times. Or for stirs equals one through a hundred, you would go through the process of stirring. So it's about being able to repeat lines of code based on a condition. So you're always evaluating whether or not you need to repeat that those lines of code. That Conditional expression is going to evaluate to true or false, much like what we discussed with the if statement. So if statements also have a condition that evaluate to true or false to determine whether you whether or not you need to execute the lines of code that are in the clause for the if if statement. So let's say that I want to evaluate user input and I'm asking the user for a positive number. If the user doesn't give me a positive number, I'm going to ask them again for a positive number. So let's, let's do this. Let us use a while loop for this. So I've started the code. I've got a scanner class there to get user input, input from the keyboard. Okay, and so I'm going to want to prompt the user system.out.println please enter a positive number all right and then i'm going to read in this number using my scanner next int okay i'm going to say it's an integer, so please enter a positive integer number. And I need to create my variable number. All right, now let's say I want to give them an opportunity to repeat doing this over and over again. So I've got my two lines of code that I'm asking for a positive number, right? Line 23 prints a message to enter a positive number. Line 24 reads in that positive number, or reads in that number. If I want to do this while that number is not positive, what I can do is use a do while loop because this is going to execute at least once. And my condition that controls this is while the number is less than or equal to zero. So in other words, I want to repeat this, these lines of code while the number is less than or equal to zero. So while this evaluates to true, this is going to continue to, to run. Now the reason why I didn't do a, a while loop, so I could have, so I could have done you know, while, just move this. Okay. 
So I could have done something like this, you know, while number is um, less than or equal to zero, but I need to actually have a value for, um, you know, I have to, I have to have at least asked them once. So it gets a little convoluted in this case because I don't have anything to check yet. So I can prompt them for a number, read in the number, and then check to see if the number was less than zero and then start repeating those lines of code. And this would work just fine too. Usually if you have code that you want to run at least once, that's when the do while loop is best because it checks the condition at the end of the loop. So I'm going to undo all this and put it back as a do while loop. So this code will repeat. So lines 24 and 25 will repeat while the number is less than or equal to zero. Because the whole point is I want to only keep going once they've added a positive number. So to kind of demonstrate that, I'll just print a message that says, finally, you entered what you were supposed to. Number is positive. All right. So to test this, what you would do is, and your 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 textbook, the um, Kai Hortzman Late Objects textbook, they do a good job showing you how to trace through an algorithm to see if it's right. And so what I would tend to do is test this with maybe um, the value minus one, then the value zero, then the value positive one, and then maybe even just for grins minus ten and a and hundred and to see what actually happens. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to compile this and then run this. And so let my first test case, let's enter minus one. Now when you test things, know what the expected re results should be. And if you don't get those res expected results, then to go, it's time to go back and look at the algorithm. So I'm going to hit minus one. Okay. So my expected results were that code that's inside the do while loop should repeat again. So, and it does. It's asking again for that positive number. Um, so let's enter zero. Okay. Now it's asking again for that positive number. All right. So while number is less than or equal to zero, it's repeating. Now, if I wanted to say zero is a positive number, then I would have needed to change it like this, which I would tend to feel like that that's the way this should work. So I'm going to keep testing. So I'm going to enter one. Okay, and it says finally you entered what you were supposed to number is po positive. So I made that change. So instead of having numbers less than or equal to zero, I changed it to numbers less than zero. So let me test it again. And when you're testing loops, it's good to test around the bounds of the loop. So the bound of this loop is this, you know, less than or equal, less than zero. So I, I want to test everything kind of near it. So negative one, zero, and one. That that's the ideal um, way to test that condition. So I'll enter minus one. Okay. I'll enter zero. All right. It considers zero positive number, which is the way I wanted to design this in the first place. And let's just make sure a positive number that's greater than zero also works, and it does. All right. Now, let's say that we want them to enter a number that is positive, but we want to not have it be, like, really gigantic. So let's say we want them to enter a number that is positive, but less than, say, a 1,000. So please enter a positive number, but something not as not bigger than a thousand okay and then I'll change this to finally you enter what you were supposed to number is positive and not bigger than a thousand oops change this all right so now we have two conditional expressions that we need to use to control the loop so 
not only do we want this number to be positive, we need this number to be less than or equal to 100, right? So it's either got to be, it, it's got to be within the range of 0 and 100, or 1,000. So what we can do now is build what is called a compound conditional expression. And you can either and conditions or or conditions. What I usually do is I take my best guess logically and, and try it by testing it. And if that's not quite right, then I'll try the other. So in my mind, I'm thinking the number should be, when I re want to repeat this, it's when they've entered a negative number or they've entered a number bigger than 1,000. So the or sign is written like that. If you're not sure how to do that up and down line, that vertical line, it's if you look above your, your return or enter key, there's the um, backslash. If you shift that, you'll see that vertical line. You just hit that twice. So I want to repeat this process of prompting <coughs> for a number that's positive but not bigger than a thousand when they've entered a negative number or they've entered a number that is greater than a thousand. Okay? So, and then I've got two conditions, but that while loop needs to look at it as if it's like one conditional expression. So I'm going to close this whole thing in parentheses. Okay, so whatever is in this parentheses has to evaluate to true or false. You can have several conditions in here and you just and or or them depending on how the logic needs to be. So this reads number is less than zero or number is greater than a thousand. So if this evaluates to true, this is going to repeat. The minute that one of these evaluates to false. Well, actually, they both have to evaluate to false for this to not repeat. This is why those truth um, tables where you, you hand trace like the book was showing is really helpful. So I would test this now with, say, minus 1, then 0, then 1, then 1,000, then 1,001. And that would test all those conditions and really um, push the limits on the conditional expression for this while loop. So let's now compile this and run it. So I'm going to run it first with minus 1 and I would expect this to ask me again, which it does. Now I'm going to enter 0 and it should be satisfied, which it is. So now I'm going to run it again and I'm going to test it with 1, which it should be happy with, which it is. Then I'm going to test it with a 1,000, okay? Because remember, it needs a number that's between 0 and a 1,000, all right? So now it's happy. Now let's see what happens if I give it a 1,000. We would expect it to prompt me again. Nope. Okay, so it did not prompt me again. So let's do this. So if the number is greater than or equal to a thousand, let's see if that improves the logic. All right, so we know a thousand, it, okay, so it's not happy with a thousand and it's not happy with a thousand and one. All right, so we need to enter something that is be between while well, number is less than zero or number is greater than a thousand. That's that's when we want to repeat this. All right, so let's run this again. Let's stop this and compile. Okay. All right, and so that's right because it needs to be between zero and a thousand. So that is right. So if the number is less than zero or the number is greater than a thousand, then you want to repeat. If it's between zero and a thousand, then it's going to be satisfied.
Thanks for listening.